am back with another vintage skirt tutorial. Hi friends, if you're new here, welcome. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this two-tiered, gathered, vintage-inspired skirt. I think this could kind of fit into the 40s or the 50s or even the 80s. It's also quite similar to like an 1890s or 1900s petticoat, and I've used it as both already. This is a pretty easy beginner project, so let's get into it. First, let's talk about fabric. You can make this with pretty much any light to midweight woven fabric. I used a 4.7 ounce linen, but a cotton would work just as well, or any other lightweight fabric. And how much fabric do you need? Well, that depends on the width of the fabric and the size of the skirt, but somewhere between one and a half and three yards. You're also gonna need a skirt hook or some hooks and eyes and a few sew on snaps. Other than that, you'll just need your normal sewing tools, a sewing machine, scissors, thread, pins, maybe a thimble. You can sew this skirt entirely by hand, but for the sake of this video, I'll be demonstrating how to construct it on a machine. This skirt has three main pattern pieces plus two for the placket, so that's five altogether, all of which are just rectangles. So first, the waistband. The waistband is going to be the size of your waist, plus about an inch for overlap, plus another inch for seam allowance. And the width is 3 inches for about a 1 inch finished waistband. Now I want to say that you can pretty much create this entire pattern without using a measuring tape or any kind of standardized measurement. You can just take a string or ribbon and wrap it around your waist and pinch it and then add your overlap, add your seam allowance, and that is your waistband length. So then you need to figure out the length of your full skirt. So to get this measurement, you can stand up in front of a mirror and take your string or your measuring tape and hold it and let it hang down and pinch it at your waist and decide how long you want your full skirt to be. To figure out how long to make your first tier, pull it up so that the measuring tape is around just above your knee. This is up to personal preference really but I chose to do mine just above the knee. So your next pattern piece, which is the first tier of your skirt, is going to be whatever that measurement was, plus two seam allowances, so I did half an inch of a seam allowance on either side, and then for the width of this piece, I did twice my waist measurement. Now, depending on your proportions, like if you have a tiny waist and you're also quite tall, you may want to do twice your hip measurement, uh, just to make sure you have enough room and movement in the skirt, but for most people, if you're short like me or more average proportioned, doing twice your waist measurement is probably going to be fine for this. Now, depending on the size and also the width of your fabric, you may have to cut this as two separate rectangles and sew them together, which is completely fine. Moving on to the bottom tier, to get the length measurement for this, you're going to take your full skirt length and subtract your first tier length, and then add a seam allowance and a hem allowance. You can really add whatever kind of hem you would like to do. And then the width of this rectangle is going to be twice the width of the last rectangle. So four times your waist approximately. And you're probably gonna have to cut this in multiple pieces. Anywhere from two to three, four, or even five pieces, uh, you may have to piece together to create this really long rectangle. For your placket pieces, to measure your placket length, you can just measure from your waist to around your hip or a little below your hip, just to make sure you have enough room to put the skirt on and off. So that's probably gonna be somewhere between seven and maybe 10 inches long. And then for the width, one of these pieces is about an inch and a half wide. I cut mine at about an inch, which worked, but it was a little too narrow. And then the other one is three inches wide. So you have, they're the same length, but one is a little bit narrower and one's a little bit wider. The first step is to get your cat off of your fabric. This step may not be necessary if you don't have a cat or you didn't leave your fabric on the floor overnight. Maybe press your fabric if it seems necessary and lay it out on your cutting surface of choice or not of choice if the only one you have that's big enough is the floor. Now you just cut out all of your rectangles. One tip that I have for cutting out rectangles is to measure out the first few inches and then use that part of the fabric to fold and use as a guideline to continue to cut out your rectangle. And you do have to be a little bit careful with this because your cutting line can get a little zigzaggy. Uh, but yeah, if you do this carefully, it can be a really nice way to just bring your measurement guide along the fabric. The first thing I did was piece together my second tier. For me, I had cut two long strips that went all the way from salvage to salvage, so I just sewed them together on the short ends 
and left it at that. If you have raw edges here, you may want to do a French seam or zigzag or serge the edge. That's up to you. Then I attached my placket pieces to my upper skirt here, sewing them right sides together to the short ends of my skirt panel. One goes on either end and make sure that they're both, you know, at the top, not like one's at the bottom because that would be a little awkward and you'd have to take it out and do it again. Then I took them both over to my iron and pressed my piecing seams open and I also pressed my placket pieces. So to do this, first I pressed everything outwards towards the placket and then for the larger placket piece I pressed the far edge under and then I pressed the whole thing in half. And depending on how you want to finish this, you can either press it to your seam or a little bit past. So if you want to finish it by hand, press it to the seam. If you want to finish it by machine with the stitch in the ditch method, press it a little bit past. And for once, I'm actually demonstrating the machine method for this. So I've pressed mine past the seam line a little bit. And it's not very much. It's maybe a sixteenth of an inch really not a whole lot, just a little bit past that seam line. For the smaller placket piece, you're going to press the edge under and then press the entire thing towards the body of the skirt so that none of the placket is showing on the right side of the fabric. This one you can finish by machine just by top stitching it, or you can finish it by hand, which is what I'm gonna do. So here to finish the larger placket piece by machine, I'm sewing from the right side so that I can see sewing right in that seam line in the crease of that seam line that I already have and feeling with my fingers to make sure that I'm catching the bottom edge of that placket. Unless you're using a super thin fabric, you should actually be able to feel that edge and ensure that you're catching it in your stitches. And ideally your thread matches a little bit better than mine, but even as it is with this obviously different thread color, you still can't really see this finish from more than about four feet away. So it is relatively invisible. Then I matched up the short ends of my upper skirt here, putting the placket pieces together, and then sewing below those placket pieces. Then I did a little reinforcement stitch, so to do this I pushed all of my seam allowances towards the side with the narrower placket piece, and then I sewed back and forth a few times right at that joining point where it goes from being a seam sewing the skirt together to having those two separate placket pieces. And this just reinforces that area to make it really strong and prevent tearing. Then I went back and finished my small placket piece by hand. If you do this by machine, I would recommend doing it before the previous step just so it's easier to maneuver it around your machine. Then I ran two rows of gathering stitches around the top of this skirt here. One was about 3 eighths of an inch away from the top edge and one was about 5 eighths of an inch away. I took some pins and marked the four quarter points, or actually three of them because one is just the opening, but I marked it in quarters and then started to gather up the skirt. Then I got my waistband and finger pressed both of the short ends under about half an inch. If you're working with a fabric that doesn't finger press, you may want to actually press this with an iron, but with linen or with like a quilter's cotton, you can just finger press this. Then I measured in from one of the creases about an inch, which is going to be our underlap for the placket, and then I put a pin there. Then I marked the four quarters from that point, excluding my little underlap section. Then I matched up my quarter points on the waistband to the quarter points on the skirt and arranged the gathers to fit in between those areas and clipped them in place. I'm just using clips here because I like them, but you could also pin this. Then I sewed all the way around on my machine from the gathered side just so that I could arrange the gathers as I sew. Then I took it to my ironing board and pressed everything really flat. And I don't recommend skipping this step because the gathers are going to get really bulky and pressing it will help you to be able to fit them all into the waistband and to just make sure that everything is laying how it's supposed to. Then the waistband gets pressed under on the short edges and the top edge gets pressed under and then the whole thing gets pressed in half. To finish off the waistband, you can do the stitch in the ditch method that I did with the placket or you can finish it by hand with a whip stitch, which is what I'm gonna do. Moving on to the lower tier of the skirt, first I hemmed it all the way around and for this hem I folded it about 3 eighths of an inch under and then another 3 quarters of an inch, but you can really do any hem that you like. 
Then I ran two rows of gathering stitches along the top of this tier just like the last one, only for this one I did it in separate sections because having gathering threads that are more than about four or five feet starts to get really really tricky. So I recommend splitting this gathering up into multiple sections. Then I pinned the four quarters on this tier as well as the four quarters on the edge of the previous tier, gathered it up, and matched it the same way that we did before. Everything gets arranged and pinned in place and sewed on. Now I've decided to just leave this edge raw uh, with a fabric that isn't overly prone to fraying. I found that it is fine if you have about a half an inch of seam allowance. It doesn't fall apart, you can machine wash it and dry it, but if you would like to or if you're working with a fabric that is more prone to fraying, you may want to overlock or zigzag stitch or bind this edge. Then once again I took it over to the iron and pressed these gathers. A little tip for pressing gathers, you can see here that I'm pulling the fabric as I press to make sure that all of the creases that I'm pressing in are relatively vertical. Now for the closure, I'm using this big wide skirt hook, uh, but you could also use two separate normal hooks and eyes. Uh, I just sew these on, make sure that everything is lining up on the waistband, and then to close the length of the placket, I'm using these little vintage sew-on snaps, which I'm pretty sure are exactly the same as sew-on snaps you can buy today. There shouldn't be a lot of strain or stress on this placket closure, so you should be able to close it with only one, two, or maybe three snaps. I only did one, it worked out for me, but if you want a little bit more security, you could do two or three. I don't think you need to be putting them like every half an inch. And yeah. That is it, your skirt is now complete. If you do make one, I would love to see it. Tag me or mention me on Instagram, at Lynn. And here is a cute little montage of me wearing my skirt. Subscribe if you want to see more of me. I make historical and sometimes vintage sewing content. There's more vintage to come. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!